So welcome back. Make sure your phone is turned off if you use that during the break. I want to say a little bit about our Arts Council. It's a nonprofit here in Placer County. I've been on the board for six years. We're all volunteers. And we would like to thank all of you for coming out tonight to support this program and other programs. We truly believe that art should be a part of everyday living. I'm a retired architect. I understand art somewhat. I've traveled some. But it never ceases to amaze me what some of our young people can create and do. And that's our future generation. So let's not forget that. To learn more about our Arts Council, we do have a website, placerarts.org. And you can like us on Facebook if you're doing that. All students that compete tonight will receive a $20 gift card to Big Spoon Yogurt provided by the Arts Council. Big Spoon Yogurt. I'm not sure if that's Roosevelt or Rockland. Anyway, they're a big supporter of ours. Also, I happen to have in my back pocket some Starbucks cards that might make it to our contestants also. Enjoy artworks created by Placer County artists in your favorite yogurt shop. We also have a large art show hanging. You know we're the Rockland Packer Lab over there by Safeway on, I think that's Granite Drive. We invite you to come by and enjoy our art show. And we do have some upcoming shows that you can get up off our website. So come on by and see some of our artistic talent. Okay, so let's get on with our competition. This is our second round, or round two. Uh, we're going to go in the same order. So Catherine Dow. Catherine, come on over. <laughs> Catherine told me before we started tonight that her favorite country to visit would be Italy. And what she wants to do She's around 30 years old, is working in an sorry, IMCU, is that, is that right? In, in a hospital, so that's great. Go ahead. I am offering this poem by Jimmy Santiago Baca. I'm offering this poem to you, since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you, or like a pair of thick socks the cold cannot fight through. I love you. I have nothing else to give you, so it is a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It is a scarf for your head to wear over your hair, to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost, needing direction in the wilderness life becomes when mature. And in the corner of your drawer tucked away, like a cabin or hogan in dense trees, come knocking, and I will answer, give you directions, and let you warm yourself by this fire, rest by this fire, and make you feel safe. I love you. It's all I have to give and all anyone needs to live. And to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. Okay, now let's uh, excuse me, welcome back from Placer High, Allison. Her favorite country to visit is Taiwan. Yeah. And she hopes at age 30 to be doing genetic research. Someone who never met her. 
him, take your stroll in London. After a month of grief with the long odds, to refresh yourself in the park before moving on. Suppose he notices on the gravel path the shards of a green glass bottle that your grandmother, Miss Little Girl, will be destined to step on when she wanders barefoot away from her secret kitchen. If he does a skip down and speak in a slightly big one as if she be there yet to refresh him. For you to burn a candle for him, you needn't suppose to cover you with one. Just deep enough to keep her at home the night of the hay ride when she meets Helen, who is soon to become her dearest friend, whose brother George, 30 years later, helps your grandfather to blow and search his shoe stores into London in the Great Depression. And his son, your father, is able to stay in school where his love of learning is fanned into flames, a love he labors later to kindle in you. How grateful you are for your father's efforts is shown by the candles you burn for him. But today for a change, why not a candle for the man whose name is unknown to you? Take a moment to wonder whether he died at home and family, or alone on the road, on the lookout for no one to sit at his bedside and hold his hand. The very hand is time for you to imagine home. Second poem from the John Adams Academy. It's Emory Luna. I got it right. Her favorite country is Switzerland. And at 30 years old, she learned to pursue something she loves. April Midnight by Arthur Simmons. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together through the tumultuous night of London in the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gas lamp, day's work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool to the wind blows fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing after the heat and the fumes and the footlights. You dance, and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here, together. Good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight, lover-like in a lover's gloaming. You the dancer, and I the dreamer. Children, together. Wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Thank you. Okay, our next contestant is Merrick Slane. His favorite country is somewhere in South America. And he aspires to be an electrical engineer. forever and forever 
and forever. Why should I climb the lookout? At 16, you departed. You went into far Kutoan by the river of swirling eddies. You have been gone five months. The monkeys make sorrowful noise overhead. You dragged your feet when you went out. By the gate, now, the moss has grown, the different mosses, too deep to clear them away. The leaves fall early this autumn in wind. The paired butterflies are already yellow with August over the grass in the west garden. They hurt me. I grow older. If you are coming down through the narrows of the river Kiang, please let me know beforehand, and I will come out to meet you as far as Chofu Star. Thank you. Now for a final poem of the night, let's hear it for uh, John Adams Academy student, Jared Ferrandis. <laughs> Jared's favorite country is Italy, and he hopefully is doing something he really likes when he's 30 years old. <clears throat> metal splinter from my palm. My father recited a story in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and mouth blade. Before the story ended, he removed the iron sliver I thought I died from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still. A well of dark water, a crater. And I recall his hand Two meshes of tenderness he laid against my face, and flames of discipline raged above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm. A silver tear, a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look. How I shave her thumbnail down so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter. I was seven when my father took my hand like this, and I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, metal that will bury me, christen it, little assassin, or going deep for my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited. Remember, the judges are still scoring, so uh, there's probably a sequester room in the back and a soundproof box where no one can talk to them and let them do their final figures. So give us about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> one of the reasons it took so long is they were so good. It was difficult. I would like to ask all five of the participants to come on up here. Come on down. I just want to congratulate all of you. And uh, on behalf of the Arts Council, the Starbucks, you can wait for your finals or whatever you're doing. That's cool, sure. And it, it was uh, rather an interesting deliberation, but we'll, we'll announce the, uh, the winners. The second runner-up of our countywide poetry out loud competition is Jared Aranis. Aranis. And our runner-up for our countywide poetry 
don't know, competition is Emory. Yeah, no. And finally, the winner of the 2018-19 Placer County Poetry, Poetry Out Loud competition, winning a cash prize of $150, and an all-expense paid trip to Sacramento <laughs> to compete in the state finals is Catherine Dow. <laughs> participated. You're all winners in our, in our mind, Poetry Out Loud 2018-2019. Thank you.